I don't know about you, but working with greens is one of my big hassles. Do you prefer to mix your own greens? Which is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. As always, the materials used are listed in the description below. So gear up and come paint with us. In this delicate little picture, Heinrich used a variety of greens, which we will show throughout the video. The paper is taped to a flat wooden board and he first masked out some of the areas where he wanted to preserve the white on the paper. If you want to know more about masking fluid, head on over to our video about the marvels and miseries of masking fluid. The link is in the description below. You don't have to use thick lines of masking fluid. Fine lines applied lightly will do the trick. Let the masking fluid dry naturally. A hair dryer is not a good idea. It makes the masking fluid difficult to remove. It shouldn't take too long to dry, about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how thickly you apply it. To test for dryness, you can touch it lightly with your finger. It should feel cool to the touch and it shouldn't adhere to your fingertip. On the palette, we have Hansa Yellow Medium from Daniel Smith, Quinacridone Red from Holbein, Prussian Blue from Schmincke, and Van Dyke Brown from Windsor & Newton. For the greens, we have Sap Green from Schmincke, Cobalt Green Pure, also Schmincke, Davies Grey, from Holbein and Shadow Green also from Holbein. I don't know if Davies Grey can be called a green but it's a very good mixing color to have. He's using the Princeton one inch mop to wet the paper completely making sure there are no dry patches or puddles. Use a crosshatch pattern to do this. The colors are pre-mixed on the palette. If you work wet on wet, it's a good idea to have your colors pre-mixed. The paper can sometimes dry very quickly and you might struggle to mix the same tone and value if you don't have it ready made. He's using the Princeton number 12 round and starting off with Hansa yellow medium, spreading the paint lightly over the right side of the picture plane. He follows that with quinacridone red, gently mixing the color on the paper to create a lovely orange hue. Next up is cobalt green pure. He allows the colors to mix freely on the paper and he doesn't always clean his brush before loading it. In this way he gets beautiful unique color combinations. He adds a touch of sap green which is a rather bright green, which he then tones down a bit with a shadow green 
all the while using quick, light strokes to mix the paint on the paper as he adds the various greens to form different layers. Let your painting dry naturally. He's using a rubber cement eraser available from Amazon to remove the masking fluid. The eraser lifts the glue easily and doesn't damage your paper. Make sure there's no residue left on the paper before you start working again. He's using the Princeton Snap number zero round and sap green to paint the initial stems, using the white spaces as guidelines and adding some more stems and leaves as he goes. He adds the different greens to create shadows and definition. The Princeton is a synthetic brush, which is rather rigid. It has a remarkably fine point and the little belly holds quite a lot of paint. Instead of using blue and yellow to make different greens, Heinrich used sap green as his base color. He mixed some of the Hansa yellow medium with a sap green to bring variety into the different greens. He also used sap green mixed with Davies gray to subdue the brightness of the sap green a little. In some cases, he used the sap green as a pure pigment. Sap green is a lovely mixing color. To make the green cooler, you can add blue, and to make it a bit warmer, you can add yellow. Adding paints grey will make it a bit darker, and adding brown will give you a rich olive green. He uses the Van Dyke brown for the stem and shadows on the dandelion adding touches of green as well.
For the splattering, he used the silver black velvet number 12 round. It holds a lot of paint, and the flexible tip makes the splattering rather interesting. Be careful here though, as the bigger brushes hold a lot more water and you can easily misjudge the size of the droplets. Back to the little snap for more detail. For the flowers, he made two premixes, Prussian blue and quinacridone red, and then quinacridone red and Hansa yellow medium. The little flowers are very loose, so they're basically just a few dots on the paper. He started with a blue-red mix, adding dots of flowers randomly, and then adding a few more shadows to enhance the shapes of the stems. Here he adds the premix of the quinacridone red and Hansa yellow medium to add a little warmth to the flower, dabbing out a bit to soften the tone and bring the background and the foreground into harmony. Have a look at some of these videos in our playlist if you want to know more about color mixing or landscape painting and don't forget to leave a comment via Condios.